Hey man, it's your boy Full Tuna Stunner, straight out of Cheeseburg, Florida. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. I really came from the gutter, came from the rags of hustle. I'm in my bed, duffel. I turn my bed, not a. All right, we got 420 Stunner off the porch with us today. What's good with you, bro? How you feeling today, man? Feeling great, feeling great. Yeah, appreciate you coming by, man. All the way from Florida. What are you working on here in Atlanta for this trip? Um, I really just came up here to highlight you. I got a um, trapping in the basement with Big Rank in the night. Yeah, hanging out a little bit, checking out the vibe. Okay. How you like coming up here to Atlanta compared to back at home? I mean, it's way different. Man. You know what I'm saying? You know, we be riding them foreign cars. Well, I'd well, be at it's like some big shit. You come up here, that shit's like everywhere, bro. It's like it's way different. Yeah. So kind of mix in a little better. Yeah. All right, so what's life like in Leesburg? Man, you know, it's a small city doing big things. All we do is get money in Leesburg. We ain't got no club. It ain't really, it's, that's all everybody do in Leesburg, get money, bro. You spending money or getting money, one of the two. Yeah, it's a pretty small city, like you said, right? Yeah. Trying to take us there, trying to get us to the next level. The whole world got to know about Leesburg, bro. Yeah, you're definitely the first rapper if I had from Leesburg on the porch, man. So mm -hmm. that's what's up. You definitely making some noise out there. Yeah. All right. So how old were you when you jumped off the porch? I'm going to say jumping off good, like getting in deep, like 15, 16. Okay. Do you have any family members out there to kind of guide you? My whole family was in the street, so it wasn't, no other, it wasn't even no other option. Yeah. And you end up doing some time, though, right? Yep, I did like um, 13 months of the road. I went to Lake Butler and Lake City. I EOS, that's about 2014 when I started taking my music serious. Okay. What they lock you up for? Um, uh, VOP and convicted fellow with a firearm. Oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, but it was like my first time really, really getting in trouble like that. So good lawyer and stuff. Okay. So what was one of the biggest life lessons you learned in the streets? In the streets? Man, it don't matter how much love you show a nigga dog, that shit'll still bite you in the ass in the end, bro. You just gotta keep real people around you, keep your circle tight, and stay from around fuck niggas, and die to fuck niggas, pussy ass hold, and you just dodging all kind of fuck shit, bro. Real shit. All right, so how long you been rapping now? Taking it serious, probably about five years. Okay. Yeah, taking it serious about five years. What had motivated you to start taking this serious when you got out? Well, shit, when I was down, all I used to do was write a, bu write a bunch of songs and shit. I was rapping a little bit before I went in, but you know what I'm saying? I used to be rapping to my bunk. He used to be tired of hearing that shit. I'm like, man, bro, you got to check out this new shit on dropping, bro. He's like, man, don't. But shit, got out of made that shit a dream to reality. Yeah. Who were some of your musical influences? My favorite rapper of all time is Boosie Badass. Hmm. And of course, you know Tupac. I got that Stunner Valley dropping on July 25th. Motherfucking fucked up by your scooter. Shit like that. Yeah. So how'd you get the name 420 Stunner? Man, I used to be like 15, 16. I'd jump out the window, go catch my little licks on feet and shit. Wait for all driving. Used to be an old lady around the block. Name was Miss Robin. She was like 80 years old. So she used to always be out there. In the, working in our garden two, three in the morning and shit. So <laughs> what? I, yeah. <laughs> so I used to be walking. She used to always got that shit. Like, man, what you out here doing, man? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just chilling. She was like, man, you a night runner, dog. I'm going to start calling you a night runner. So she smoking weed. I'm just like, man, 420 stunner, dog. Hmm. 420 night runners. Was, I was in a rap group at first, but I wasn't solo. Yeah, I saw you guys had put out a project under that name, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long ago was that 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 project came out? That's really what I was working on when I got out at 14. So me and my partner, Hot Red, 420 Shots, and my boy, Hot Red, we had to put out a couple of projects together. 
My brother was having some little legal issues, so he had to spend his time on something else. So I just kept it moving, holding it down. Okay. So what's the music scene like in Leesburg, man? I mean, it's a couple rappers around there, though, but you can't really take them seriously, bro. They, a couple of them be like flies and faking, and some of them niggas be telling. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's some good talent down there, though, too. It's a lot of people I fuck with, though. Yeah. It's a lot of people I fuck with. Shout out to my boy Cut Reek, um, Epiphany, El Chango, High Red, 420, 420 Perry, my nigga 420 Joke. I'm saying we're going to hold it down. Are most of the artists out there, they supportive of each other? We see you showing love, No, too. no, no. Support system fucked up down there in Leesburg, hmm. bro. The hate be realer than a bitch. Bitch want to kite you out, really. Hmm. So how I got my buzz down in Leesburg, first, at, at the gate, a lot of people, I feel like they're going to love you, hate you, and love you again, bro. First, everybody was fucking with shit. And they're like, oh, man, this nigga doing a little too much. Nah, they go to Hayden, but then all the surrounding areas go to fuck with me, come all the way back to the house. Yeah. Does that hate just spill over from the street shit, or is it just not wanting to see other people make it before them? I mean, I think it come from the next man doing good. You Deep down, you want to tell them, you know what I'm saying, keep going. But you like, dog, man, nigga down the street, I can do better than him shit. So that's how that shit be going, bro. I just stay out the way and stay clear. I can see it smell it from a mile away. Yeah. And I see you starting to do pretty well on YouTube. Have you been surprised by how many people are starting to fuck with your music now? No, nah, it was a matter of time, bro. It was a matter of time. Keep dropping that motherfucking gangsta shit. And don't be capping, telling no lies and shit. Just keeping it real, dropping that real shit. Yeah. I can't help but fuck with that shit. And like I already know what time was. I just need the world to know what time was. Yeah. Any plans to move out of Leesburg if your career continues to take off like this? Yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I ain't got no ideas of where I would move yet, but I'm going to just go with the flow. Okay. Just kind of let that shit gravitate. Yeah. Like you mentioned, you get the stun of Ellie. About the drop, man. So yeah. let, let's start with this artwork, man. That's causing so much controversy right now. What was your vision for the artwork? And can you explain what's going on with it? Man, I've been getting a lot of controversy about that shit, bro. Like, nigga, people saying, oh, you'll never be big as Tupac. Who this dude think he is? Man, everybody know Tupac. I think he made it to 25 and passed. Tupac to me was spitting two totally different aspects of what was going on. He was kind of like on some black power type shit. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a, uh, it from a different point of view. You feel me? People like, no, oh, you, you man think he's better than Tupac. I ain't never said I was better than Tupac, but the objective of doing anything in life is to be the best you can be. I'm trying to be better than everybody. Just like you. Instance, you know, I feel like LeBron gonna get Jordan respect. LeBron trying to be way better than Jordan. Shit, if I'm trying to be better than everybody. I ain't gonna lie. Boots, my favorite rapper. I'm trying to be better than him too. Sure. But I love Tupac, bro. That's 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 the kind of shit I be listening to. Was the artwork was that your idea, or is that just what the graphic designer came up with? Well, my first artwork, I had kind of made it like. A split face of my face and Tupac, but this shit came back looking crazy. So I was just thinking, dog, motherfucking, I just need to unzip out of Tupac. Like, I'm Tupac reincarnated, dog. Tupac back from the dead. That shit running through me. Did you ever think uh, when you posted the artwork, you would get this much controversy? Yeah, so? I knew it was going to get a lot of controversy. But that controversy going to help me get them screens up because Bitch got to click on that shit, like, and then when they click on it and really get to listening, okay, now I see what he's saying. I got to come fuck with this dude. Because you got to have nuts to even try that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know all my shit. I'm done. Yeah. What's been some of the most wildest comments or feedback you got when you posted this? <laughs> Man, this one dude was like, bro, how do I... 
It was like, man, take this shit down, man. You ain't even famous, bro. I said, damn. I some of one dude made me want to call me back. I was like, nah, I ain't even gonna come. I just coming on the July twenty fifth, bitch. <laughs> He, and then he was like, oh, motherfucking, it don't matter if it was July 26th. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, man, but I know when that shit dropped, they're going to be all on that. They're going to be all on that shit. Bro. Yeah. Are most of the negative comments you get, are they from your followers or people who don't even follow people, you? It's all people that don't know me. Okay. Everybody who know me or her, any of my music, it was great flames and muscle emojis and Keep up the good work. All right, no, you ain't bullshit and that type of shit. Yeah. All right, so what should fans expect to hear on this Stunner Valley album? Man, that Stunner Valley, I've been dropping that straight motherfucking gangster shit, that real motherfucking trap shit, that motherfucking real trench music, bro. That's that, that shit. Ain't nobody rapping like this right now. This mm -hmm. shit ain't even rapping like this going on right now. And talk to us about this new song and video you dropped, uh, Gambling, with Coley P. Man, I had I had um Coley come to the booth. It was already a hook I had done came up with the day before. So I really ain't think it was that hard at first. I was in there, I went to hitting that shit chance and and ass and Coley was like, man, you crazy, bro. That bitch slides. So I was like, all right, fuck it. We went in there and dropped that bitch and I just freestyled my verse hmm. and shit. Coley went in there and did his thing and that shit was you know, I think that bitch gonna be a hit. How'd you link up with Coley at first? I first met Coley. Let me see. I don't. I don't move Coley for a while. I think I first reached out to him for a feature on my Road Runner Stunner mixtape, and I um actually linked up with him in Orlando at Best Believe video shoot. Best Believe and Loose Cannon had a video shoot, mm -hmm. and I was there. We ended up doing a song, and we ended up just kicking it from there. I got like three, four songs with Coley. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, what can you tell us about the song Leesburg Anthem? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when I dropped that Leesburg Anthem, it was a it was a Leesburg cipher that they was doing in my area and everybody kept on asking me to get on it, but I ain't really know the other artists who was on it like that. So they end up putting it out and as they, they put it out and it ain't get the feedback, I don't think they want it. Everybody was like, man, Stunny, you should have been on that bitch. You should have, ain't no, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna drop the lead bird amp. Go on that bitch and get it to him, give him that real raw shit. I see that shit's doing numbers too, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. I had big ranking on that. Big ranking love that song right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. got the juvenile sample and everything. Yeah, I actually played that bitch for juvenile. I had a show with juvenile hmm. and he was fucked up about it. <laughs> nah, that's what's up, man. Yeah, he was. Uh, you're also gonna have Jimbo World feature on the project, right? Yup, a brick crazy. Yeah, trying to run it up, going brick crazy. These niggas still broke this shit crazy. They ran it up, they still had. Yeah, that video is over hundred and thirty thousand, I think. Yeah, yeah, going crazy. Did you know that song was going to take off when you dropped it? Yeah, I did. I almost had. At first, I was like, man, I was going to try to actually reach out to Young Scooter to get on that song. Hmm. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to keep that shit in Florida. And I and I was already fucking with Jimbo shit pretty hard. So I had to send him over the track. That bitch ended up, he ended up riding that bit. And that video shoot was really my first time meeting Jimbo face to face. And we like connected like right out the gate. So okay. That shit was everything. Did you shoot that in uh, Leesburg? No, nah, I was finna shoot in Leesburg. But this fuck shit that like been going on be going on at least where troll be on Facebook and shit. So I was promoting. I'm like, dog, bit one video shoot. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The troll pulled up to the location a week ahead of time, and motherfucking like, dog, it's gonna be a video shoot. Here we gonna shut that bitch down. So I ended up having to shoot that bitch in Bellevue. Oh shit. Hmm. Yeah, that police shit bad at least, bro. Do you have a personal favorite song that's going to be on Stunner Valley? I got a song on there called Can't Touch Me. I freestyle. I feel like it's one of the smoothest shits I ever made. This bitch made for the radio. And I don't, it's a song that's just different than any song I ever made. I don't even usually rap like how I was rapping, but I was just trying some new shit. But that's that's my favorite song off the project. Okay. Can't Touch Me.
What's your expectations when you drop this project? Like you said, it's one of the hardest albums to ever come out of Leesburg. So what do you expect? You expect to get to blow you up, to get you signed, or? I mean, I just want the world to know about Leesburg and know about me, bro, and just learn about it. Just know it's, it's some different shit going on in some other places, dog. Because I feel like I, I signed a deal, but I ain't ever had nobody push me before. I always promoted my own shit, like put my own budget behind myself. So I already bought everything I wanted. It wouldn't even make me no difference if I signed a deal. Hmm. Like, it'd just be some extra shit so I could, you know what I'm saying, devote all my time to music, but I already had everything I wanted. I was uh, scrolling your IG page, man, and I saw this Hummer golf cart that you got. <laughs> yeah. Talk to us about the Hummer golf cart. All right. I got a, um, I'm going to give it to you for the golf cart. I'm going to tell you why I did that to the golf cart. I got a Delta 88 1975 Vert on some motherfucking gold that is. I've been building this bitch. I was trying to have this bitch ready for Father's Day, but it ain't made the cut. So um, I had a couple of little, couple of little tweaks I had to do to it. So I was like, fuck it, dog. I can't go out like that. I motherfucking bought the golf cart and dropped a chameleon on that bitch and dropped the music. Me and all my brothers had golf carts. We come through them bitches, like seven of them bitches back to back. It was hot as fuck. Everybody standing around. We come through. We got fans on these bitches' music. So that shit was doing it. But yeah, I just did that shit because my vert wasn't done in time. I was like, should I hook up a mini vert in the meantime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a Hummer golf cart. And then, like you said, the chameleon paint on there, too. Yeah. Stunting in the golf cart. Stunting in the golf cart. Pull to in the stomach. <laughs> what kind of looks do you get when you ride by in that? I mean, I don't really ride it much. I really just got it to ride it that day. And I really just got that shit so my little sister and daughter could play on it. So. They be riding around the neighborhood, playing their little music and shit, spinning on the block. I do. <laughs> so I just really bought it for my family. I bet. I just needed it for one day. I had to get to some niggas' ass. Yeah. All right. Stunner Valley on the way. What else you working on right now? Um, I'm trying to get, I'm um, just shooting my videos. I got like, I want to say like four videos done for the songs or all the songs I had got on the mix. It's like an eight track mm -hmm. tape. So trying to get all the videos done for it and knock out these interviews and just get that promo right. Okay. All right. Any last words or shout outs before we get you out of here? Man, shout out to motherfucking Cheeseburg, Florida. You know what I'm saying? I got the city on my back. I'm finna motherfucking take us there. And Mark my words, throw the village drop on 25th and ain't no looking back from that, you feel me? I really came from the gutter, came from the rags of hustle. I'm in my bed, duffel. I try my bed, not to love him. I try my bed, not to cover.